So last week we looked at a Contra rotating gear fan and if you're like me, well I know a lot of you like me because you love that design as did I. Well good news, we have, we have another fan that makes a play at this gear driven fan trend that we've been into lately and I think you're really going to like it because I do. But before we get to that one, let's talk about the other fans in today's lineup because this is a full blown episode of the Fan Showdown, season four, episode two. And the first one up we have is the Spinny Duct. This was created by Ryan. Now, before we saw, you know, gear fans, we had ducted fans or fans of velocity stacked. I mean, the fan that's leading season four of the Fan Showdown is the Cheater, is also the one that won season three. And the Cheater employs the, uh, the velocity stack mentality pretty well. However, Ryan decided rather than creating a separate duct or a separate velocity stack for his fan, he would combine them into one. The spinny duct does exactly what its name entails. Its whole velocity stack, the duct, spins along with the fan. Now, truth be told, Ryan doesn't know, Ryan isn't really convinced that this is going to work very well. However, he hasn't seen it done very much and you know he's like why not let's uh let's give it a shot he was kind enough though to make this design require minimal support material which is very helpful when you're making or printing a model this tall at 0.2 millimeter layer height thank you ryan it did uh, make the print time far less than it would have been if there was a whole bunch of support material now this next one at first glance looks pretty straightforward however if you look a little closer you might notice something's missing this is the MFBBSB and it was created by Marnex and the MFBBSB stands for missing a fan blade but still balanced. Whew. The name comes from the fact that there's literally a fan blade missing. Now, as you might know, you can't just delete a fan blade from a symmetrical fan. If you do so, the, the vibrations are going to be unmanageable, but Marnex knows this. So to correct for this imbalance issue he added a little bit of material to the fan blades that would be flanking the missing one marnex said as long as i print this at 100 percent infill it should be balanced pretty well so i did print it at 100 percent infill and it does actually seem to be pretty pretty well balanced for missing an entire blade what i'm really curious to know though is how is this missing blade going to affect the sound profile i think that'll be pretty interesting so stay tuned for that one now the last one we're going to look at before we get into our new game, our new gear fan is the Falchion, which was created by Zentrox. Zentrox said he's been watching the fan showdown since the very beginning, so thank you for that. If you're new here, get subscribed. But he's noticed that a lot of fans have their blades swept forward, and he's like, um, why? Let's uh, let's try backwards. More interesting though is on the underside of each one of these fan blades, there's a little tiny fence, which was inspired by the MiG-15. On aircraft, these wing fences are normally seen on swept wing aircraft, and their job is to keep the entire wing from stalling all at once. On a swept wing aircraft, as it slows towards stall speed, the angle of the leading edge forces some of that airflow sideways towards the wingtips, and as this progressively increases as the aircraft slows, the airflow at the wingtips can sometimes end up being almost all spanwise. This means that the effective airspeed at the wingtips can be well below the stall speed of the aircraft. Because the lift generated at the wingtips is behind the center of gravity, this lift generates a nose down moment. So when the tips stall, it results in a powerful pitch up. And that's like the last thing you want when your aircraft is stalling. Now one aircraft that suffered from this greatly was the F-100 Super Sabre. This phenomenon was so common on the F-100 that the pilots had a term for it. It was called the Sabre Dance and a lot of F-100s were lost to the Sabre Dance. Now wing fences can eliminate or delay this effect by stopping or hindering that spanwise flow. How will that translate to the fan? Well, uh, maybe it will keep airflow from being flung out towards the tip of the blades and create increased performance. I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now it's time for the one we've all been waiting for. Ah, this series of parts creates an assembly called the duplicator. Now the duplicator was created by CADMADE and the idea here is that this center gear will drive six smaller gears that are attached to fans that will hopefully move air. Each of the small fans is comprised of a little tiny spur gear with a thread on top that screws into a little fan through this uh, frame deal that then mounts to the fan itself. And the idea is that the main, the main gear again will spin 
and it will spin these little tiny spur gears, which will then spin the fan, and then hopefully air will go the right way. Now, again, will this work? I don't know. I waited to put it together until you guys got here because we all know that the A12X25 isn't really a torquey boy. So I don't know if it's going to be able to spin all these little tiny fans, but we got to find out, right? All right. So here are all of our required components for this fan. Obviously you need the frame first. The main gear goes onto the hub. And like the last one, we just got to make sure it's as flat as possible. All right. So this frame, the idea here is this will mount on top, not touch the main gear. And then all these guys get mounted through that. So, okay, that touches. So that's not, a, that's not what we want. Uh, give me one second. There we go. So what I did essentially is I just took the model that was sent to me. I cut off this corner, added some little ears to it. I'm just gonna put these on the fan itself just to make sure we have the proper spacing over the main gear because uh, it definitely is not gonna spin if this frame is touching that one. So yeah, that'll, that should, yeah, that'll work. All right, so got that sorted. Gear through there, fan on here. There's one. <laughs> there you go. You got six little, little tiny baby fans. So now let's get our spacers back on here. Oh, fits like a glove. One, two, three, four. And I think we can use some normal case fan screws to hold this right into the fan itself. <laughs> it actually spins pretty easily, but we're going to add a, a little bit of my favorite hops gun oil that works great for fans as well. Just to, just to make sure it works as good as possible. All right. Place your bets. Do you think it's going to work? Yes. No. I already put a target on there because we remember what happened last time. I stopped it, tried to put a target on things broke, but uh, okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> Again, no hesitation. It's super loud. Zero hesitation. It's really, really loud. Not a speed demon. 630, 650, 650-ish RPM. I think it's moving something. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Oh, my God. It hurt my ears. Another successful gear fan. I don't know. I'm not really sure what it is about this specific design, but just putting it together made me, made me smile. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but I know that it does, which is pretty funny. Uh, if anything, it's very loud. How loud is it? Uh, let's find out. The duplicator came in at a massive 85.7 dBA. And if you look at the spectrum of this thing, it's not just, there's not like a standout frequency that's loud. This, the whole thing is just loud. The falchion came in at 50.8 dBA. The missing blade came in at 53 dBA and it also has a very unique sound as well. And the spinning duct came in at 51 dBA and I noticed that the sound appears to be like mostly wind noise or buffeting. So far, we've learned two things. One, the, the duplicator is extremely loud and the ducted spinny, spinny duct, it's moving air. I'm just not sure which, which way it's moving. So we're gonna need to take a closer look.
Now the first thing I noticed during the smoke test is that the missing blade and the falchion seem to be performing pretty much as one would expect uh, a standard well-made fan would do. The spinny duct, on the other hand, is extremely turbulent. It looks like it's throwing just as much air out forward as it is backwards. So I'm not really sure how well it's going to do in the airflow test, but it does seem to be moving something. And most surprisingly, the duplicator does appear to be working. Not that well, but credit where credit's due, the little baby fans, they do, be, they do seem to be moving air in the proper direction. How much air? Uh, to be determined. The duplicator produced 276 feet per minute. The falchion produced 624 feet per minute. The missing blade produced 613 feet per minute. And the spinning duct produced 381 feet per minute. Placing the falchion in first place, the missing blade in second, the spinny duct in third, and the duplicator in fourth. Overall, the falchion and the missing blade did end up placing fourth and fifth respectively, so new fans to the board. But most surprisingly, at least to me, is that this fan did, did work. And it's probably one of the loudest fans I've ever heard in my life. So thank you guys all for watching. If you want to get involved in the fan showdown, make sure to check the link in the description below. All the information you need, essentially head to my Thingiverse account, pull the drawings down for the critical dimension you need to hit. Send me at least an STL file to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. Get subscribed, stick around, and we'll see you we'll in the next video.